Okay, we are recording. Good. Excellent. So now we're going to learn. <laughs> I was like looking for the. I was, I was looking for the ukulele. <laughs> what was that? Oh, a rubber band. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to talk about stability, gain margin, and phase margin in the Bode plot, which is actually the preferred way to, to do this. So uh, Bode plots are an alternative representation of the positive J omega axis Nyquist plot, which we discovered you can learn about stability from. Um, you don't have to. Uh, uh, do the negative j omega, and you don't have to do the infinity one, so you can you can get away with it. Um, for these reasons, the stability, gain margin, and phase margin can all be found from the Bode plot. Um, yeah. Uh, in fact, this was the preferred method for finding these quantities. Um, well, it's at least the preferred method for finding the latter two of these, the, the gain margin and phase margin. Stability, uh, this is probably on par with the root locus methods you've learned and Ralph Hurwitz and, and all of that. So this is just another way to do it. Gain margin and phase margin, now this is the preferred way to do that. So it is common but somewhat risky practice to simply use the Bode plot to determine stability, gain margin, and phase margin. Here's why it's risky. When we use it, we assume that the system, one, uh, uh, is open loop stable, um, uh, and, so not only is it open loop stable, uh, and with sufficient gain, encirclements of minus one are clockwise, okay? Which may not be true, uh, and, Three, uh, the Nyquist plot has a single negative real axis crossing, which is not also which is also not always respected. So they're commonly met, but there are plenty of systems for which they are not. Okay, uh, for this reason, we encourage caution with this common practice, and proceed by describing the method. So what I would say is since you're going to get your Bode plot from MATLAB anyways, uh, toss in a Nyquist. Make sure that these assumptions are met. And then go ahead and use the Bode plot for the gain margin and the phase margin. You can tell just based off of a, a quick little Nyquist plot whether or not these conditions are met. Um, and if they aren't met, then you should use the Nyquist plot to, talk, to, to do that. If they uh, are met, then just go ahead and use the Bode plot. So, recall that the gain margin, GM, is defined by the distance between the negative real axis intercept of a Nyquist uh, plot and negative 1. Okay? Um, realize that's a typo. Uh, this occurs at negative 180 degrees. So if we went back to our figure here, um, when we have this crossing of the real axis, we're at negative 180 degrees, right? Because the, the phase is measured from the positive real axis, so negative 180 degrees. Uh, and um, th the distance is between the minus 1 and the negative 180 degrees. So on a Bode plot, such as that of figure 7.7, .7, so like say you've got a Bode plot, and we're going to look at it in the region of 0 dB, which corresponds to magnitude what? Not in dB. Do y'all remember? 
One. Yeah. Zero dB is just magnitude ratio of one. So what is, uh, so, so magnitude one um, is there. And then at 100, negative 180 degrees is also the region that we care about as well. So we care about magnitude one and uh, negative 180 degrees. This is similar to what we're looking at here, but we're, we're not uh, putting them on a, a polar plot. So the, <coughs> excuse me. The polar plot uh, has magnitudes. We care about this minus 1 magnitude. And phase, we care about this minus 180 phase for the gain margin and the phase margin. So let's interpret uh, our definitions of gain and phase margin in terms of the Bode plot. So similarly, recall that the phase margin is defined as the difference between the angle at magnitude 1 Right, so magnitude one, um, which is this unit circle in the Nyquist plot, so that's this point is where it crosses, right? Um, it's the, the difference in angle between that ray and this negative real axis. That's the phase margin. So on a Bode plot, when the magnitude crosses one, starts to go below one, and it starts to, to get smaller and smaller, that magnitude, then we know that we're, uh, that this corresponds to the phase margin. So wherever, whatever frequency this occurs at, that occurs at the, at the phase margin frequency. So what you do um, to find the phase margin is to locate this 0 dB crossing of the magnitude plot and just follow it straight down to whatever the corresponding frequency is. So just follow it straight down and see what the phase is there. And the distance from negative 180 degrees to there, up to there, is your phase margin. Okay? If your phase margin is negative, so if your phase is actually um, down here, and your phase margin has to go below 180 degrees, if it's going this way, that's negative phase margin, which means that you are unstable based on the assumptions about our system that we made. So th we're using the Bode plot, so we have to check on the Nyquist that it's true. But often this is, this is the case. So that's cool. Um, to find the gain margin, you have to look and see where is this this, um, remember that the, the gain uh, margin is defined as the logarithm of A, right? It's 10. Was it 10 logarithm A? Or 20, I can't remember. Um, but it it's, uh, depends on this intercept, right? And that intercept occurs at negative 180 degrees. And so wh what we do is we find where this phase crosses 180 degrees, and we follow it up at the same frequency, and we find out how much uh, of a margin here we have before we get to 0 dB, which would be, the, which would be this point, uh, magnitude 1 on the negative real axis. So that's our, our gain margin. And we have to we have to do it in dB. But that's, you know, why do we, why is gain margin usually in dB? Well, because usually people think about it in terms of the Bode plot, which is in dB. And so that's why we think of it in terms of dB. So gain margin is uh, found by just going to negative 180 degree crossing and following it up and gain margin is defined as positive from 0 dB down to this. So if you end up with a gain margin that goes up, that's a negative gain margin and your system is unstable. Okay. So that's gain margin and phase margin from the Bode plot. But let's not forget that we have to be careful when we apply 
But, well, so it's super easy if we just use this, right? If we just use the photo plot, it's really nice. Um, and we'll do an example in a moment, and we'll see, like, in MATLAB, they'll even draw these lines for you. Like, you don't even have to do it yourself. It's so ridiculous. Um, but MATLAB is not going to tell you if that means it's actually stable or not. It's basing that on the assumptions that we made on this previous page. You know, one, two, three. These are the gain and phase margins of your Boda plot, assuming that these hold. So you have to be the one to check that. MATLAB won't do it. At least I don't know of any way that MATLAB checks that. OK. So let's do an example. Gain and phase margin from a Boda plot. <coughs> Let the open loop transfer function g h of s be defined as follows. So we've got third order, no zeros. Um, determine the closed loop stability, gain margin, phase margin from the open loop Boda plot. Okay. Um, so we probably should check the Nyquist. Um, so let's let's go to MATLAB and play around, shall we? Let's do let's to MATLAB. So I think I plotted out I didn't show you guys I didn't show you guys the plot. So we'll go to MATLAB and we'll and we'll see it. So I think I have this plugged in there correctly. Um, so I need to set k equal to 1. Um, so the numerator is one, just k. And then the denominator uh, has s cubed plus 2s squared plus 5s plus 6. OK, good. So let's do some cells here. And Uh, it's it, it just it just says that uh, so it's just a constant so if we were to look at sys it's just a constant there if we have two terms then it goes up to uh, an s term it's like a ta s plus one term. Um, yeah so we just have no zeros in this one uh, I actually unfortunately have to quit MATLAB and then launch it again because I I don't know why. Maybe it's Apple's problems. So um, that'll just take a minute to boot. So we want to look at the Nyquist plot, where we could interpret stability from that. Um, but frankly, it's easier to just go to the Boda plot to do it. So let's check the Nyquist first before we use the Boda plot. That's our rough methodology. So you can use this. Uh, uh, oh, that's, that's, we're not even going to go that far yet. I'm just going to define the system first. And then let's look at Nyquist. Nyquist. Uh, is that the one that is the plot? Let's do help Nyquist. Yeah, it does. I thought it did. OK. So let's look at the Nyquist response. So there's our minus 1. And so first off, uh, we had to look at our, our, we should look at our eigenvalues of our system to see how many open loops, this is the open loop GH, right? No, 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 how many uh, eigenvalues of this are in the right half plane to start, right? 
So our assumption, if we're going to use Bode plot, is that there are none, right? So we look at eig of cis, and we see negative real part, negative real part, negative real part. So that's a check. So we verified that. We also want to check that our Nyquist plot has two properties. First off, that for um, uh, low gain, there are no encirclements. So, well, a few things. No encirclements at low gain, and that for high gain, there are clockwise encirclements. So notice that this is directed this way, right? So if we were to scale this up, we're going to eventually get negative 1 inside this, right? Inside this loop, which is going to have two clockwise encirclements of minus 1 and therefore will make the system unstable. Okay. So this is the typical system that we often see, but we didn't know that until we looked at the Nyquist plot and we checked the eigenvalues. So we did those two things, and now we know we're good to go. So, uh... Oh yeah. Thank you. That was the other thing we had to. We, we, that only crosses the negative real axis once. So the negative real axis starts here and goes left. So it only crosses it the one time. Uh, we don't have multiple crossings because you can get um, multiple crossings, and then you can. What happens if you have multiple crossings? You're going to cross on the Boda plot the negative 180 degree line multiple times, um, and you're going to cross the, I mean, depending on the situation, you, you're going to cross your, um, your magnitude 1, uh, your 0 dB line multiple times. So to really interpret what's going on, it's best to just go to Nyquist and see, okay, like, what do these encirclements really mean? Like, and that's the safe bet. In the Voda plot, you're kind of feeling it out in the dark, and you're you know, it's best to just come back here and say, okay, I see what's going on. If we scale this up, it's going to go unstable. And I also have a pretty good idea that you could multiply this by a gain of, this is like 0.25 or something like that. So like a gain of four or so, and then I should be able to, I should go unstable approximately. So you can scale it just like this put in your gain of 4, and we didn't quite, marginal. yeah, is it marginal here? This might be marginal. Oh my goodness, right on the money, <laughs> or pretty close. It's hard to say if that's within uh, the numerical error or what, but um, yeah, so if I did a gain of 9, clearly we've encircled it twice, clockwise. So our z is equal to negative 2, and we're unstable. So n is equal to negative 2, p is equal to 0, and so z is equal to negative 2. No, positive 2, to negative n. There's, there are actually a couple different standards for whatever reason. We couldn't agree on one or the other of n equals z plus p or n equals z minus p and like the, the, the definitions change subtly so we we just we just can't agree on that formula so we all just uh, have to deal with I think that I have it consistent with I think I have it consistent with nice but nice is somewhat unusual because a lot of other books use a different convention it's weird but for whatever reason it works that way in these. So that's, I mean, this is all jiving with what we're familiar with, right? So now our, our next step is to, is to, so we can use Boda and look at the Boda plot, right? Which is fine, uh, but it, it's not something that we can see the values very easily from. We can pick out points. Uh, I will tell you that the margin one's easier to use. Oh. We should set this to gain of 1, 
while we do all of these calculations, right? K should be one, and then we'll be able to see the gain margin and phase margin properly. If you set the gain to something non-unity, then you end up with a, uh, a uh, skewed version of gain margin and phase margin. So that's important to remember. So look, let's look at this. The ordering of this was kind of weird. I'll move this down here. So now let's look at margin. And we see um, the following. So the phase margin's coming out strangely, so we'll have to investigate that. The gain margin is coming out to be 12 dB. Okay. So what it does is it crosses the um, so uh, did oh okay so my fa so I'm I'm not I, I, my gain or my magnitude never gets up to zero right so that's my problem so the phase margin is not defined for this system. Um, and that's because if you look at the Nyquist plot, it never goes outside of the unit circle. Right? So the phase margin is not going to be defined because it never leaves the unit circle and then enters it before it comes in to here. But the gain margin will still be defined. It doesn't mean that the phase margin is like means this doesn't mean you're like unstable or something it just means it's not defined for the system which is fine um, now your uh, your gain margin is going to be still defined and so when we go through negative 180 degrees which uh, it doesn't I thought it showed a line here but it should show the line at negative 180 degrees or I guess it doesn't when it doesn't give you a phase margin but see in between those two points um, we look up here and we see how much gain we can increase before we go w before we hit 0 DB and that's this distance so if I put my check on there um, it's it's between those two. So it's between negative 11 and negative 12 uh, dB below, or negative 11 and negative 13 dB below zero. So, um, so in other words, we have a gain margin of 12 dB. It even says the gain margin on the plot. But essentially, you can move this thing up and scale it by 12 dB, which uh, if we wanted to know what that was in amplitude, we would have to compute that, but dB is usually what it's expressed in anyways. So I said a factor of 4, um, and that is actually what is approximately 12 dB is. So, so those are sort of like different ways of hacking this or cutting this and to look at stability. But the, it's important to say, I, so it is tempting, I know, that it, Nyquist plots are a little weird. And why they work is a little esoteric and it's kind of hard to follow. And there's a tendency for students to be like, oh, I get Boda plots. Nyquist is freaking me out. I'm going to focus on Boda plots because you can do the, the stability stuff from Boda plots and gain margin, phase margin, and stuff. Um, yes, but you're going to be in trouble if you wind up with a system that uh, doesn't, doesn't uh, jive with those assumptions that we make about it to use the Boda plot. So I find the best uh, policy is to just look at the, look at the uh, Nyquist plot first, get a feel for the system, make sure that it fits those criteria that we have for it, and then afterwards, 
use the Boda plot for the gain margin and the phase margin. Especially the phase margin. Gain margin is easy enough from the Nyquist plot. It's actually not hard from the Nyquist plot, but the, but the phase is, I mean, it's not super hard. You have to take an arc tangent. I believe in you guys. I think you guys could take an arc tangent. So, right, because uh, on the, f uh, so let's, let's say instead of putting a gain of one in the numerator, I put a gain of, of uh, three in the numerator. And this gives us a, uh, a gain margin, or this gives us a non-zero phase margin, okay? Because the unit circle isn't drawn on here, but I believe this leaves it and comes back into it. So when we do this one, yeah, we're gonna actually see the the phase margin here as well. So the gain margin and the phase margin. So the gain margin became 2.5 dB, and then we have 27 degrees um, of phase margin. So it's yeah, it's important to make sure that you kind of understand where this is coming from, and you look at it um, on your. Uh, on your Boda plot, but if you look at the Nyquist plot, we could figure this out. If we also drew on top of this, we, like, they don't draw the unit circle. It would be kind of nice if they did on these Nyquist plots. For whatever reason, they don't do it. But if they drew the unit circle on here, we could find where this thing uh, intersects it, right? Which is, I don't know, probably somewhere in here, right? So what was the phase margin in... Um, so it's like it should definitely not be phase margin in radi. Uh, oh yeah, so phase margin is 27.8 degrees. So whatever that is in in radians, we could we could essentially come here and we could click on that point that has the magnitude of one approximately. And then we could figure out the arc tangent of that and do it too. So we could use this. When you have a tool like MATLAB, it's it's almost easy both ways. So the Nyquist plot is a little bit more uh, uh, powerful, I guess, to use. Um, it tells you more information. Okay. Good. Good. Any questions on finding stability from Nyquist plot, finding stability from Boda plots, making some assumptions about the system? Yeah. Uh, in the phase margin, so is that telling us, I don't, I don't, I don't exactly understand what it's telling us, actually, how much phase we can, or how much we can change the phase until it goes into phase? Uh, it tells you it tells you essentially how close you are to going unstable and I'll, and I'll explain it in terms of this diagram so the phase margin makes its reference when you cross back into the unit circle so the closer you get to crossing right at negative one which would be marginal stability the smaller that angle is going to be. And therefore, it gives you a sort of metric for how stable you are. So is that telling you anything that the gain margin doesn't tell you? Uh, they, they're related but independent quantities. Um, uh, it's... The gain margin is a little bit easier to interpret as far as like a physical quantity because you increase the gain and then you can either be stable or unstable. Um, 
the phase also changes. The phase margin is going to decrease as you increase the gain, but it's not in that nice linear fashion. It's very nonlinear in a lot of cases. So it doesn't have quite that same tight relationship to the gain, but it is related. And if you go to, if you hit that critical gain, your phase margin will be zero. And So one way, uh, so let's, let's say that we had, um, so if we had a, a gain margin, I'm going to delete the orange one here. So say we had, um, I'll draw two systems with the same gain margin and with different phase margins. So this system would have the exact same gain margin as the green one. So the orange and the green would have the exact same gain margin. But the, the orange one would have a smaller phase margin. And it is, in fact, closer to going unstable than the, uh, uh, in a certain sense, than the, the green one is. So there's... Um, It's, it's, uh, uh, and when we start doing some more controllers, uh, you can affect gain margin and phase margin. And so, and they're also related to other time response characteristics, which we haven't really discussed yet, but we'll discuss in the last lecture today. And, and so these quantities um, tell you things about the system that are slightly different, but they're still related. And so I, I, the time response characteristics related to the phase margin are different than that for the phase margin, or for th than for the, 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 than the gain margin. Um, and also, you can have two systems with the same, like this one, same phase margin, or same gain margin and different phase margins, or same phase margins and different gain margins. And so you can. Um, you can sort of get a, a feel for uh, the system in two different lights, although they're like not totally uncoupled. And I, and I would say that gain margin is easily the more intuitive of the two, um, although they're both totally valid. And, and they both go to zero, well, gain margin is usually in dB, but if you didn't have it in dB, then the gain margin would go to zero magnitude. Um, at the same time, the phase margin goes to zero magnitude. Um, but they approach differently. And so they have different, their responses are different. The characteristics of the responses are a little bit different. And we'll talk about how to interpret them a little bit in the um, next lecture. So I think it's the next lecture. Maybe it's this one. Now I'm forgetting. Uh, oh, yeah, now it's the next one because we finished this one. Good. So yeah, so the, the last lecture, we'll talk more about the gain and phase margin in terms of the time response of the system. Um, so yeah. Did that kind of answer your question? Cool. I'm going to get like rambling phase now, so I don't really know when I've like finished answering and when I'm just jabbering. So, what is, uh, any other questions before we move on to the last lecture? I think the last lecture, I think we're going to get out of here on time today, like reasonably. Um, so let's.